Hi, I'm Emma Delaney. No, not the star of Time Bandits, but the professor of entrepreneurship. And today I want to talk to you about why the management section is so important in the business plan. Before I do so, though, I want to tell you a little bit of a story. And that story is that 20 years ago, my dream was to become a publisher. And I want to become a publisher for a computer book company. Now, that computer book company changed its name all the time because it was bought out by several people. But let me show you where I was in the chain. This was New York, and New York reported to Indianapolis. Beneath Indianapolis, we had a president who was there, and then there were six different imprints which put out books. And that way, if you didn't buy a book from one particular imprint, you bought it from another. So we were our own internal competition. Beneath each imprint, there was a publisher, and beneath the publisher, you had publishing assistants, sort of assistant publishers or associate publishers. The title would change a little bit. And beneath each one of those, you had plenty of employees that were there. Um, I actually worked for an imprint here, and I wanted to rise to the next level and become the publisher. Now there is no way you can work for one imprint and be really good at that job and get the publisher's position. Because what they want you to do is they want you to get lots of different experience working at different companies so that you can actually show what you know. So not only did I work here, but then I transferred to another part of the, the company, and then I transferred to another part of the company as well. So I moved around, did what I had to do, got the experience that I needed to do, because I wanted to be able to move up to this publisher position and have an imprint of my own. Along the way, though, something really interesting happened, and that is that I started getting phone calls out of the blue from places that were being ignored by others. One of my specialties was putting out computer books on certifications, and particularly operating systems and network certifications. So we put out books for Microsoft certifications, Novell certifications, Cisco certifications, and so on. One day I got a phone call from IBM, and IBM wanted to know why we didn't put out books on their products. Why didn't we have books on OS2 and LAN server products? My answer, of course, was because no one would buy them. There was no market for it whatsoever. Um, IBM believed that if there were books in the market, more people would want to use their products. And so, using sort of a circular logic there, they wanted us to publish books on their products so the market would create itself, buy more of their products, buy more of our books, so on and so forth. I told them that I obviously couldn't do that, that that wasn't a possibility. But IBM came back with a really interesting offer. They said that if we would publish books on OS2 certifications and LAN server certifications, they would guarantee that they would buy 15,000 copies of each book at full book value the list price of the book. Now bear in mind that the books that we used to put out, we would put through the bookstores, and the bookstores paid less than 50% of them. So if we would put out a $75 book from IBM, and IBM would agree to pay for 15,000 copies of it, that was an awful lot of money right there. It would pay for itself immediately. IBM's hope was that we wouldn't publish just 15,000, that we'd publish a lot more. Sell the 15,000 to them and then use the rest to go to Borders and Barnes and Nobles and your usual bookstore chains that were there. Um, so I agree, and, and, and we did that. It was a very lucrative deal. We made quite a bit of money off of it. And then all of a sudden I got a phone call from a training company. And a training company wanted us to take one of our existing books that we already had, rip the covers off of it, and put other covers on it that had their name on it. So it would look as if it came from that training company as opposed to coming from us. We already had the book. We'd acquired it. It was a work for hire. There was no cost to it whatsoever. They agreed to buy a, a pretty sizable quantity of them, and we made quite a bit of money doing that. Somewhere along the line, it occurred to me that what we could do is we could acquire material, pay authors as much as we possibly could for their material, and then we could publish books on that, as well as repackage it and sell it to training companies, as well as turn it into audio product, as well as chop it up and make it magazine articles, and to do a lot of different things with it. We, once we had the content, could sell it multiple times. So what I did is I wrote a business plan, and that was the first business plan that I ever wrote. Now I will be completely honest with you and tell you that that was not a great business plan. And the first business plan that you write won't be a great business plan either. It's like anything else. The more you do of it, the easier it becomes and the better it becomes. Mine was a, a labor of love and it took a long time to write and it wasn't very good. But my idea was this. My idea was, let's create a brand new imprint. That brand new imprint would handle all the special publications. So it would acquire, just as I talked about the material, it would sell it back to the other imprints so it could be used for books, 
And then it would also go ahead and it would sell the material to magazines and to audio publishers and those others that I talked about. Now you can imagine who I imagine would be the publisher of this. I was not only writing a business plan, which was an entrepreneurial business plan as opposed to entrepreneurial business plan because it was for an existing business, but I was also creating a position for myself. I wrote this plan. I felt really, really good about it. I took the plan and I gave it to my publisher and I said, you have got to read this. And it was a Friday that I gave it to him. I went home and I waited all weekend for him to call. And he didn't. And on Monday, I waited for him to come running to my office and say, you're a genius, you know, we have to go forward with this. But he didn't do that either. And Monday passed, and Tuesday passed, and Wednesday passed, and the next Friday came around, and I still hadn't heard from him. So, of course, I went to him, and I said, have you had a chance to look at that business plan that I gave you? And his answer was, yes, I looked at it. It's well written, but it's not something we would ever move forward with. And the reason we would never do so is because my job as a publisher is to put out books. It's not to put out magazine articles. It's not to do audio tapes. It's not to do those things. My pressure is coming from my boss, the president, to put out books. Now let's get back to putting out books. Well, I felt dejected because I thought I had a really good idea and I hate to see it die. So what I did is I went from my publisher and ignored him and I went to the president. Now, how many times can you go above your boss's head once? And it better be a really good reason for doing so. And I really believed in this plan. And I took it to the president and he didn't know me from Adam. And I said, will you please read this and get back with me? I wasn't surprised at all when he didn't call over the weekend. It didn't bother me then. I did think, however, that when I went in on Monday, he would be asking to see me. I figured he would probably ask to see me and my publisher as well and probably chew him out for not listening to my good idea. That, that didn't happen. Um, in fact, an entire week passed and I still didn't hear from him. So I went to him and I said, you know, have you had a chance to look at that business plan? It took a long time to get a five minute meeting with him and it was quite a few hoops to jump through. He spent those five minutes telling me that yes, indeed, he had looked at it. Yes, indeed, he thought very highly of it. But the pressure from him came from New York. New York asked every day, how much money are you going to make in this book market? How many books are you going to put out? What is it you're working on right now? New York never once said to him, oh, by the way, are there any deals where we can tear the cover off of books and put other covers on them? And so even though I had a really good idea, no one was interested in it. And that's when I quit my job. I quit my job because this was an idea that I really believed in. I quit my job and I started a company called DS Technical Solutions. And DS Technical Solutions bought content from authors and it sold it back to the imprints beneath this publisher. And it sold it to magazine articles and it sold it to training companies and it sold it to audio providers and it sold it everywhere it could. Once I had the content, I could do lots of different things with it. It was a good idea. And I believed in it, and that company was very successful. Now, why was that company successful? That company was successful because I knew this business. I worked for this publisher, this imprint. I worked for this publisher and this imprint. I worked for this publisher and this imprint. I worked for this company. I did custom printing. I did audiobooks. I had the connections. I knew as much about this market as anybody. No one else was doing what I was doing. And I saw the opportunity that was there. Your goal when you write a business plan is to know that business, to have that inside knowledge. If you do not have that inside knowledge, then you cannot guarantee that you'll be successful. You need to find someone who can be a part of that team, who can guarantee that success. The whole purpose of the management section is to add credibility. And the reason for the credibility is to say that this business will be successful. And if that does not come from you, then it needs to come from somebody else who's a part of that team. For the purposes of this class, you can add people to the management team other than group members who you honestly believe that if you went ahead with this business, they would be a part of it. You don't have to ask them. You don't have to specifically go to them and say, hey, I'm doing this class project. But you have to know with certainty that if you came to them, they would agree to be a part of it with this particular idea. Let me give you an example. Let's say I came up with an idea for a business that was a software business. 
Certainly, I could put Bill Gates down as being part of my management team, but that's pretty unrealistic because Bill Gates would never agree to be a part of my management team. Bill Gates would never even agree to actually look at the business plan itself. But Scott Jones, who is in Indianapolis and who started Voicemail and who started Cha Cha, who runs a number of other companies, I honestly believe that if I had the right idea, he would be willing to read the plan, he would be willing to invest in it, he would be willing to be a member of the team. For that reason, I could put him down on my management team and know that if I ever go forward with this, I really am going to do it, that he would be there. That's what you need to do. You need to come up with the people who will guarantee success, who will add the credibility that you need to that section. And that's the purpose behind the management section.